Many viewers are still haunted by the question, what really happened to Neo at the end of the trilogy? Did he die? Was he perhaps returned to the Matrix? No one can provide a definitive answer, and the Wachowskis aren't in a hurry to clarify things for us. So today, we'll attempt to provide a thorough response to this question. First, let's focus on an intriguing detail. As we can see, the events of the first film unfold over a relatively short period of time. We witness Neo living in the Matrix, then he's freed, and eventually becomes the one. Interestingly, in the real world, Neo's hair only grows a little. This leads us to conclude that the events of the first film take place over no more than a month, perhaps even less. This raises a curious point. At the beginning and end of the film, we see dates recorded by a phone monitoring program, February 19, 1998, and September 18, 1999. This means that the events of the first film spanned exactly 19 months. However, this couldn't possibly be the case, as the timeline of the first movie clearly indicates that it couldn't have taken that long, and any viewer would notice that. Moving on, the events of The Matrix Reloaded occur six months after the conclusion of the first film. Once again, we observe that the events of the second and third films cannot possibly span more than a few days, at most a month. So what does this add up to? One month for the first film, six months between the first and second films, and one month for the events of the second and third films. In total, the trilogy unfolds over a maximum of eight months. Yet, at the end of the first film, we see the date September 18, 1999. That's a full 19 months. In a film packed with references and double meanings, this cannot be a mistake or a typo. The conclusion seems inevitable. The final scene of the first film serves as the concluding scene of the entire trilogy, and there are numerous logical confirmations for this. Let's start from the beginning. In the scene, we see the date September 18, 1999, followed by a system failure. But what causes this? After all, in the first film, Neo didn't have time to do anything. He had just discovered his powers as the one. So, what could have triggered the system failure? It seems that by the end of the trilogy, Neo managed to broker a truce with the machines, allowing people to freely enter and exit the Matrix from the real world without the fear of agents. In such a scenario, the agents found themselves out of a job. This had never happened before, which explains the system failure, as many of its functions became obsolete. Moving on. Throughout all three films, Neo remained mostly silent preferring to ask questions and listen to understand who he was, his purpose, and what he needed to do. Such a meaningful monologue would only be possible at the very end of his journey, at the conclusion of the trilogy. Neo hints at monumental changes in the Matrix before hanging up, gazing at the peaceful sky, and soaring into the air, showcasing his powers and the possibilities of this world to everyone around him. Notice that Neo isn't afraid that the people witnessing this will be in danger, realizing that something is amiss and that they're living in a simulation. Previously, the rebels would meet at night, and Neo primarily used his powers only after dark, as those who saw him would be in serious danger. The only exceptions were when he had no choice, during the battle against hundreds of smiths and when he saved Morpheus from a deadly chase on the highway. Yet in the final scene of the first film, he calmly flies into the sky in broad daylight among a crowd of people. Recklessness? No, it's simply that people now have nothing to fear. Another interesting fact, the location where Neo and Smith fight at the end of the trilogy is the same street from which Neo makes the call at the end of the first film. So, it turns out that at the end of the trilogy, the machines take Neo, and they do so gently and carefully, and likely reconnect his body to the Matrix. After some time, Neo awakens, perhaps this is the date within the Matrix, becoming one of its inhabitants, helping anyone who wishes to escape. Now we can confidently say that the final scene of the first film serves as the concluding scene of the entire trilogy. It's unclear why the Wachowskis chose to do it this way. Perhaps they feared they wouldn't be able to make more than one film, which was quite possible, given the boss's attitude toward their project, so they decided to show the ending right away. Or maybe they wanted to create a unique twist or mystery. 
But now we are certain that we've answered the question of what happened to Neo at the end of the trilogy.